to Speak the Word with Bible teacher Joanne Ramsey. Please join Pastor Ramsey now as she continues to teach God's soldiers how to wield the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. You know, saints, the message tonight is a little different than I normally teach on. But however, I have prayed about what the Lord would have me to share with you tonight. And, you know, and when I was praying and talking to the Lord about what it was he would have me to share, because I always like to consult the Lord because it's his word that I'm teaching. And uh, I want to give the own, you know, the word that he wants me to give. And when I was talking to him about that concerning uh, tonight's message, he began to speak to me concerning his return and talk and the signs of the time. And then I began to think about all the signs that Jesus told us to look for concerning his return. Saints, I believe that time is very near, and I believe that the signs speak for themselves. In Matthew 24, 36, in the New Living Translation tells us that no one knows the day or the hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son himself. He said, only the Father knows. And it says in uh, 37 that when the Son of Man returns, it will be like it was in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people were enjoying, he says, banquets and parties and weddings. He said right up to the time that Noah entered the ark, right up in time till he got in, got in the boat. And it says that people didn't realize what was going to happen until the flood came and swept them all away. And I believe it's that way now. I don't think people really believe that Jesus is coming back. And, and I believe it's coming back soon, but I don't think most people believe that. But like he said, it's going to be like it was in the day of Noah. People won't, they won't, uh, you know, they made fun of uh, Noah. Mm -hmm. You know, for a hundred years it took him to build that ark. And they made fun of him, ridiculed him. And but you can understand why too, you know. You know he's building it out in the middle of the desert and uh, for a flood and it's never rained. They'd never seen rain before, <laughs> you know, but you know, there's a lot of things the Lord's asked me to do sometimes I thought was kind of strange, but you do what the Lord leads you to do, regardless of what it is. He says in verse 44, he said, you must be ready all the time. He says, for the son of man will come when least expected. In Luke 17, 28, he says, and the world will be as it was in the day of Lot, he said, people went about their daily business. He says, eating and buying and selling and farming and building. Uh, building. He said, yes, it, he says, it will be business as usual. He says, right up to the day that when the Son of Man is revealed. You know, over the past several months, saints, I have taught about angels. I've taught about how God has sent his angels to watch over us. I have taught recently about heaven and what an awesome place heaven is. It's a place that the streets there are paved with gold and the gates are made out of pearls. It's a place that there will be no more pain. There will be no more tears. There will be no more sorrows. You know, and I don't know about you, brothers and sisters, but I'm looking forward to seeing heaven for myself. Amen. I'm looking forward to walking on the streets of gold. You know, I heard somebody say, you know, not long ago, said down here the people chase after gold, run after gold, but up there you walk on the streets of gold. The streets are paved in gold, you know, and I, I think it's awesome. You know, I'm beginning to see a change in some of the messages that the Lord has put on my heart. I, I know that I always teach is speaking the word, and I'm still speaking the word, and we're still going to talk a little bit about that. But the Lord has is changing it a little bit, and, and I can't help but wonder why. Because it, it just, it just subtly, you know, just, uh, you know, in the last, just, I would say just in the last five or six months, he's changing the things. And I'm, I'm beginning to hear a lot of other ministers that uh, he's speaking to also, and some of their messages are changing a little bit. The title to my message tonight is The Day of Battle, Good versus Evil. Saints, I do not believe for a minute that the Lord has given me these messages to frighten you but only to remind you that he is going to return and the things that you are experiencing here on earth is only a temporary thing, okay? Whatever you're going through tonight is a temporary thing. It's not a permanent thing. And he tells you in John 14, he says, let not your heart be troubled. He says, you believe in God. He said, believe also in me. And in John 14, 27, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. He says, I do not give to you as the world gives. He said, do not let your hearts be troubled. And he said, do not be afraid. Saints, as long as we're on this earth, 
And until Jesus returns, you and I have an enemy. Amen. And his name is Satan, Lucifer, and deceiver. And he's also known as the accuser of the brethren, meaning that he complains against those that believe in God, according to Revelations 9-11. And he's also known as the God of this world, and that's a little G. <laughs> a real little G. <laughs> And it says in 2 Corinthians 4.4 4, that Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. He says they're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. He says they don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. Saint Satan blinds the minds of unbelievers by masquerading as an angel of light according to 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen, 14, convincing the world that good is evil and that evil is good. You see it all the time. You know, Satan has many names, none of which are good. He is also a thief and he's a liar. And according to John 44, he's the father of lies. And you know, he's the father of lies because he told the first lie. So he, it made him the father of lies. But the good news is, and Jesus said, he saw Satan fall like lightning. I like that part. He says in Luke 10, 18, yes, Jesus told his disciples. He said, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. And behold, he said, I have given you authority to tread on the serpents and the scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, he says, will injure you. And according to Colossians 1, 13, he says that he has rescued you from the domain of darkness and transferred you into the kingdom of his beloved son. Hallelujah. We have been transferred out of the domain of darkness. We no longer are children of the dark. We're children of the light. Amen. Hallelujah. My point is, saints, yes, there is a thief and a liar and a deceiver out there looking to destroy you, like I said before. But as long as we're on this earth and until Jesus returns, you and I have an enemy. But the good news is we have authority over our enemy. Amen. According to Luke 10, 19. Hallelujah. He says he's given you the authority to, thread upon, uh, to tread upon the scorpions and the snakes and to put your enemy under your feet. Hallelujah. You know, God's favor. He also, we also have the favor of God. And God's favor helps you to win your battles. He, he helps you win battles that you won't even have to fight because God will fight them for you. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, he says in Psalms 44, 3, he says, they did not conquer the land with their swords. He said it was not their own strong arm that gave them victory. He said it was your right hand and your strong arm, David said, and the blinding light from your face that helped them. He said, because you loved them. Praise God. You know, this was David talking to the Lord about how he had crushed the enemies of his ancestors. David said in verse 5, he said, Only by your power can we push back our enemies. It's only by the power of God that you can put your enemy under your feet. <laughs> it's only by the power of God. And the way you do that is with the Word of God. The Word will do it. That's your weapon. He said, Only in your name. Can we trample our foes? He said, I do not trust in my bow. He says, and I do not count on my sword. He said, to save me. And saints, neither can you trust in your own abilities either to save yourself. Are you hearing me? You know, but the Lord has given you a weapon like no other weapon. His word, your sword, and the name of Jesus. That's what you need. You need His word is your sword in the name of Jesus. According to Ephesians 6, 17. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I believe Jesus is returning soon and he wants me to let you know that he is here for you and that you're not alone. And he also wants, he also will protect you just like he protected the Israelites in the desert. He's not going to leave you by yourself. There, there's really no reason to be fearful. I know there's a lot of stuff going on, but there's really no reason to be fearful. He says in Exodus 13, 21, tells you how the Lord went ahead of the Israelites and how he guided them during the day with a pillar of cloud and how he provided light for them at night with a pillar of fire so that it would allow them to travel by day and also travel by night. Hallelujah. 
But he said that it was through this pillar of cloud and pillar of fire that God was reassuring his people that he was present, guiding them and providing for them. Not only was he guiding them, but he was also providing for them, saints. They did not see God directly, but they saw a form of his glory that was shrouded by the cloud and by the fire. And he says in Nehemiah, in Nehemiah 9.19, he says, Because of your great compassion... He says, you did not abandon them in the wilderness. He said, by the pillar of a cloud, did, by day the pillar of cloud did not fail to guide them on their path, nor the pillar of fire by night to shine on the way that he said that they were to take. Saints, God will move heaven and earth for his children, his elect. He will always be here for us. And when I say he'll move heaven and earth for you, he really will. He really will. You know, I know in the past few weeks, that I've been going through a trial myself, you know. I've been doing battle like I haven't done. I can't. The last time I did a battle like this was in 2005. I mean, I battle. We battle all the time because, like I said, we've we've got an enemy here on this earth. But there are some battles and some tests that come your way that takes every bit everything you got to keep on standing. And I don't care whether you're a preacher or you're a non-preacher. It doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, you know, the more I think you're into the Lord, the bigger the target. Whether you're a preacher or non-preacher, the bigger that target is on your back. And when he, when he knows that you're going to do something for the Lord, he is going to try to his best to prevent it. But God knows he can't. If, but you can let him. But you've got the power. You've got the power to stop him. You know, like I said, I've been going through this battle and just yesterday... I felt like it had reached a point to where I had to, I had to have an answer. I, ha I had to have an answer. You, you know how it is when you feel like you can't take it anymore, when you feel like you're, you're at the end of your rope and you just can't take it anymore. Well, in my prayer time, I prayed and I prayed for I felt this heaviness on me that was weighing me down and consuming all of my thoughts to the point where I couldn't focus on my work. It was, it was consuming me. Have you ever had something in your thoughts? You know, maybe it's a sickness or maybe it's your job or your finances, but something is just consuming you and, and you can't think of anything else. You know, and finally I told my husband, I said, I got to do something about this. And so I said, I need to write this down and, and, and send it to this person. I mean, it wasn't ugly, I mean, but it was nice. He said, well, I think you need to wait a couple of days. You know, because he knew I was working on my message for tonight. He said, I think you need to wait a couple. I said, I can't. I said, you know, it's kind of like when you get sick on your stomach. And, and as soon as you throw up, you feel better. I said, I feel like when I get it out, I'm going to feel better. You know, and I did. <laughs> I wasn't ugly. I mean, I just, so, you know, I was very, actually very nice about what I said. But you've got to... Sometimes you just have to. And, but anyway, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't shake it. It was keeping me awake at night. I did recognize that it was an attack from the enemy trying to confuse me and trying to interfere with my work. So I had spent, I know I had just spent that morning, I had just spent an hour confessing what the Word of God had to say about my situation. I was decreeing and declaring. I mean, my mouth was like a machine gun just decreeing and declaring God's promises. For I knew, because I know, see, if I magnify Him, I know if I magnify Him, then whatever the problem is, is going to get demagnified. And sometimes it takes a lot to magnify Him. You can magnify God when things are going good for you. But sometimes it's a little harder to magnify God, even though you love Him with all your heart. Sometimes you just, like I said, sometimes you just got, you're under so much pressure. And such a heaviness that it's hard to magnify the Lord. But like I said, I knew that if I would magnify Him, that these out of control thoughts that I was having would be demagnified. And that's really what it is. It's out of control thoughts. As a matter of fact, all, you know, even back there worshiping the Lord, He's still bring, trying to bring some more back. And I had to say, I refuse to think on those things. I will, not re I will not think on those things. I will only think on the things above. I shall only think about the Lord. I will not think on those things. And, and you, you, you have to be adamant about it. That, that's how you're fighting your battles. That's how you're going to win your battles, whether it's over your sickness or whether it's your, fighting, what, your children, whatever it is. That's how you're going to win your battles. Are you hearing me? You know, as I said, I knew that Satan... 
I knew that it was Satan that was accusing me and not God. I knew it was Satan accusing me because Revelation 9-11 says that he's the accuser of the brethren. And, and, I, and he says he brings my name up before, he brings your name and my name up before God every day, accusing us. And so I began to say things like, Lord, since my time is in your hands, I declare that you will deliver me from the hands of my enemies and from those who are persecuting me. Father, I am totally dependent on your strong hand. You know, the one David was talking about a little earlier, about God's strong hand. Not, he said, not by his bow, but God's strong hand. He said, and I will not, and, and I said, I will not worry and I will not fret, for I know that you have a good plan for my life and that you have a good plan for my family because it tells me that he, he's having good thoughts about me today, that he's got good plans for me and they're to do me good and not evil, but give me hope for a good end. And I know this, and you know that because that's what the Word says, but we got to say it. We have to say it. Are you hearing me? And then I said, Lord, please (laughs) send an anointed person to me today. In other words, send me help. Help. Send me an anointed person today, Lord, that can pray over me and for me. I need help. You know, and, and a lot of ministers wouldn't stand up here and say that. But I'm not a lot of ministers. I tell it like it is. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm just as human as you are. And I'm just as filled with the Holy Ghost. And I can speak in tongues. And I can lay hands on the sick. But the enemy attacks me too. And it don't feel any better on me than it does on you. Hallelujah. So I ask him if he would send someone to pray over me and I want you to know saints that he did he did it was someone I had not even thought about and I knew it wasn't by accident when this person called I mean he doesn't even call this number he called my husband's I mean really he was calling my husband Uh, he called his number and he couldn't answer and normally he would have called myself but he called my ministry phone you know that you know it's just happened I haven't heard from him for a while but but he, he, he had this, uh, this person that the Lord had to call me as a very anointed man of God, spends a lot of time with the Lord, very prophetic. And he also had a word for me from the Lord confirming what the Lord had already revealed to me in my prayer time that morning. And one of the things that the Lord had revealed to me was about my freedom. The Lord was talking to me about my freedom. This stuff was trying to get me in a bondage. It was trying to bring bondage on me again. And, and I was saying to the Lord, Lord, you didn't die. You didn't suffer so I could be in bondage. You, you did this so I could have freedom. And I declare I'm going to have freedom. And that was one of the things that this person spoke to me. He said, Joe, you're free. God told me to tell you that you're free. You know, and he, he had no way of knowing that. Like I said, I hadn't talked to that. He doesn't even live around here anymore. But you know, God knows when you need some help. And he will, if you, if you ask him, he will send you, he will rescue you. He will rescue you. Saints, the Lord is here for you. And he will protect you and he will send you help when you need it. I tell you, he will. He says in Psalm 78 that he divided the sea and caused them to pass through it. And that he made the waters stand up like a heap. If you can imagine, water don't stand up. It flows, but it doesn't stand up. But it says here that not only God divided the sea, but he made it stand up into a heap so they could get through. And it says, and then he led them with the cloud by day and all the night, he says, with a light of fire. And it says that he split the rocks in the wilderness and gave them abundant drink like the ocean depths. Hallelujah. He split the rock just to give them some water. And we worried about him. Does that sound like a God that's not going to protect your saints? Really? He says He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He says He changes not, according to Malachi 3. He says He will not recant His words. He will not revoke His offer of unconditional love and grace to you. I'm going to say that again. He changes not. He's the same God today that as He was back then when He splitted, when He parted the sea. He'll always prove himself faithful from beginning to end. God is always faithful from the beginning to the end. He says in Revelations 1.8, He said, I am the Alpha 
and I am the Omega, says the Lord God who is, who was, and who is to come. He says the Almighty. Saints, as the world gets increasingly worse, and it will, it will. I want you to know tonight that Jesus is the anchor that keeps you safe until the end. Whenever that end is, Jesus Christ is your anchor, and He's my anchor. Are you hearing me? I know that there are a lot of things going on in the world today. Things that bring terror, like the terrorists killing all those people in Paris and our children being shot in the schools and people being killed in malls. There aren't any safe places. And it can happen right here in Hampton as well as it could or Virginia Beach just like it could in Paris. It doesn't have to be in Paris or another state. It can be right here. But saints, we don't have to be afraid. We don't really have to be afraid. You know, he says when all these things are happening, he said, look up. Your, your redemption groweth not. He didn't say be scared. He said, look up. You know, so a lot of people, you know, they start storing things up. He didn't say go pack up like pack rats. He didn't say save up all this stuff. He said, look up. Your salvation groweth not. You know, and think about it. If we just use our common, just the brains that the Lord gave us some good brains. You know, you can't store enough food and water. And what you store, somebody's going to steal from you anyway. Somebody's going to want it. And it might it put you in danger to have it. You know, so we, we, have, we have to, you know, let, just let the Holy Spirit talk to us. You know, He's given us a, a discerning spirit. He's given us godly wisdom. You know, we just need to use it, okay? But saints, you need to remember that God is a God of battles. He's a man of war. He's called the Lord of hosts. This is the Lord of armies. Today, God is gathering His army. He's gathering His soldiers. When He gave me, the, when he gave me this mission, when He commissioned me to do in this ministry four years ago, I just begun four years ago, and He's grown us leaps and bounds. We're over 54 stations across the country and out of the world. He wants His word out. And I, I didn't do this. God did this. But you, if you're obedient, God will do all kinds of things in your life. It doesn't have to be in the ministry. It can be in your job. It could be with your family. It could be your anything. Anything. But he's a man of war. He's called the God of hosts, the, the Lord of hosts, that the, the Lord of armies. And like I said, he's gathering his army. You know, he told me that... Uh, I guess in the very beginning of this, you know, when I was uh, standing in my kitchen and uh, talking to my husband and the Holy Spirit just enveloped me and he, and he told me, he informed me that we were entering into a time, and this was about four years ago, he, we were always, he said, Joe, we've been in a spiritual battle. He says, but this spiritual battle is going to increase. He says, it's going to get worse. And he said, my people are not ready. And he said, I want you to train them. I want you to feed the sheep. I want you to train these soldiers for these end days. And that's why I said, I need everybody's help to do this. I can't do it on my own. But God has sent me so many people that helps me in the ministry. I have people everywhere, here and there, you know, in, in, in Colorado, you know, West Star Media. They hired them about a year and a half ago because it was getting more than I can handle. And, and you know, and they... Uh, all my, Kevin sends my messages up there, you know, and, and they format them and they help me with my newsletters and they help me with a lot of stuff. Now, I've got to give them a lot of information, but they actually, you know, are putting it together. Kevin does. But Joy, you know, I have people that helps me with the CDs. There's all kinds, you know, people helping me. But you, you need all the help you can get, you know. You need, you know, you, you support me. You come out here to hear the word. That's encouraging to me. That, that, that's supporting and that, that's doing a lot, you know, because I speak to people on the radio all the time, and it's good to see faces. <laughs> and, and, of course, these messages, when I preach, whether it's in a church, when I was doing a revival down in the, up in the mountains a couple of weeks ago, um, they're the ones that you'll be hearing on the radio. This one you'll be hearing on the radio. But, you know, it's, it, it, you, know you, you still have to put, your, put it all together, you know. And I'm just blessed that the Lord would use me uh, in this way. But I am doing my best to feed the sheep and raise up soldiers for these end days. He said, you've got to teach them how to wield the sword of the Spirit. You have to teach them that their weapon is, their wor is my word. 
that's the only protection of God is my word, but that's all you need is the word of God, your sword, and in the name of Jesus, and every knee must bow at that name. There's nothing that can stand at that name. Hallelujah. Saints, we are in the day of battle. We're battling against evil and we're battling against good. God's word makes it clear that the present age is going to close with a tremendous conflict between the forces of God and the forces of Satan. Are you hearing me? Saints, every Christian is at war. There is a never-ending struggle against Satan and his kingdom from which there are no leaves, there is no discharges, and saints, there is no vacation. You, you can't take a vacation. In other words, you're going to have to stay on guard every day against Satan's attacks against you and your family. You know, he, he attacks me. He'll attack you. He might have been attacking you today or yesterday. If he didn't, he'll get you tomorrow. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And he don't care who he gets. He don't care. Hallelujah. Like I said, you're going to have to stay on your guard because, you know, the Bible tells us that he's roaming around. He's just looking for an opportunity to destroy you. He's just looking for an opportunity to stop you. Satan is always looking for a crack in your armor, saints. He's looking for a crack in your armor. And, you know, and if you get in strife with somebody, and you get in unforgiveness with somebody, and you, you do these things, that's a crack. That, that's a big door. That's not even a crack anymore. That's a big door. And, and, and this is what the enemy was trying to get me to do because, see, if he knows I, if I can get, into stri- get me into strife, uh, get me into unforgiveness, then uh, he can wipe me out. You know, he can fill me with all those thoughts and he, can do, and, and, and he won't stop you know, he'll put one in there and then he'll keep adding to it, you know, and it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And next thing you know, that little molehill now is a big mountain. And, and right now you just want to go shoot them, strangle them, you know, whatever. <laughs> but but and, and when, and, and, and in reality, it really was nothing there. It wasn't even that person. It really wasn't even them. It was the devil all along, magnifying. And that's why I said we got to demagnify. He he is a defeated foe. He is a defeated foe, brother. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. He says that in the day when God was leading the Israelites in the wilderness, he went before them and he had his angels guiding them. God now guides us through this world by the Holy Spirit. In times of heat, He's a cloud that overshadows you and protects you. In times of darkness, He's a fire that gives you light. And when it's cold all around, He gives you supernatural warmth. Hallelujah. Yesterday in my prayer time, and you know, I tell people this and they probably think I'm crazy. I got you know, plenty of space in my office and everything, but I got my bathroom. I, I just go in there and close the door, put the little lid down, <laughs> set my coffee on the bathtub, and I'm sometimes in there 20 minutes, sometimes two hours. You know, it's it just in the last couple of days, in an hour and a half or two hours, can't come out until I win this battle. You got to stay. You you can't get up. You got to stay. You know, and when I come out, I was feeling better. And the Lord sent me help, just like, just like I asked Him. You know, your prayer closet can be anywhere. It can be in your car. It can be in your bedroom. It can be in your bathroom. You know, my kitchen bathroom, whatever goes in there. And it's a cute little bath, you know. I, that's my little prayer. I, I even got a prayer book. You know, I, I, I asked this lady. She does a lot of sewing for me. She's made a lot of my pillows and draperies and things. So I said, you know, Michelle, I, re- I really need a prayer rug. That floor is kind of hard. <laughs> and so she took, uh, she took, she made me a prayer rug, and, and when I got it, it had material from everything she, I had in the house. Wow. 
She was made like, if you ever heard, like seen a patch quilt. My mom used to do patch quilts and she'd have fabrics from all the dresses that she made us or the shirts from the boys or whatever. And uh, well, my prayer rug was like that. It had pieces of all the fabric <laughs> from the window treatments to the pillows or whatever, you know, but it was nice. And I got it all up in there, you know, and I'm, I'm good to go now. <laughs> But it's, it's, it's good, you know, you've got, you need a quiet place, and I've got the whole house, but I just feel the privacy there. I just feel closed in, and I can feel, I know, you know, sometimes I feel the presence of the Holy Spirit, and sometimes I don't. But whether I do or not, what did I say? It doesn't matter what you feel. He's there whether you feel Him or not. He, he, I know He's there, and He's there when I leave. He, wherever I go, there's where He is too, right? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is your pillar of light. Yes, Jesus is going to be returning soon. But until that day, saints, we need to fight the good fight of faith. You need to let your tongue become like the pen of a ready writer. David said in Psalms 45, 1, he said that his tongue was like a pen of a ready writer. Saints, we can focus on all the destruction that the enemy is bringing against God's elect and, he, and he's using these things to distract us from our true destiny. He would love to stop me in my shoes. He started trying to stop me in my shoes a long time ago, actually almost immediately when I became a Christian. And he knew that God had big plans for me. He knew I was going to do a lot of damage to his Amen. kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> and God be willing, I'm going to continue. And I know God's willing. And if I can yeah. keep the strength that I believe I can, we're going to do a lot more damage, <laughs> a lot more damage before Jesus comes. But we must continue to arm ourselves with the armor that God has provided for us. Okay. For our battle, like I said, is a spiritual battle. You must keep on the helmet of salvation that will break the evil and inappropriate thought patterns in your mind. You know, we were talking about that. Those inappropriate, out of control. When you have thoughts and they're dominating you, they're out of control. They're inappropriate. They're out of control. And there's only one way that you can get rid of them. And that's, and that's speak, hallelujah, speak that word. <laughs> speak that word. Speak that word. You know, it's all, it is always in your minds that the devil is able to deceive you. It is in those little darts of lies that he throws your way. And he'll throw one, and if you take it, he'll throw another one. The best thing to do is not take the first one. That's the easiest battle, is to get rid of it. But sometimes he'll throw them, and you're not aware of it. You know, he's, he's, the Bible says, you know, in Genesis, he was the slyest of all, sneakiest of all. You know, and, and he, tri he tricked Eve. Adam, he, he's, he's deceived a lot of people, you know. You need to wear the helmet of salvation Amen. to protect your mind from negative thoughts that would derail God's purpose and plans for you, saints. God does have a plan and he has a purpose for your life and don't you let the devil cheat you out of it. Are you hearing me? Don't let the devil cheat you out of the purpose that God's got for you. And you must continue to wield the sword of the Spirit which I said before is the Word of God. You need to start speaking and decreeing God's Word over your life, over your job, over your health, over your family, over everything. Job, hallelujah. Job 22 says, You will also decree and declare a thing, and I will establish it for you. So my light will shine. He said, And his light will shine on all of your ways. And trust his word. We've got to trust his word to accomplish what he's sending it out to do. And know that it will not return to him void. He said, I send my word forth and it shall go and accomplish what I send it to do and it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish what I send it out to do. And we have to believe that. And, and how does it return, saints? It returns to Him when you speak it. Amen. Just say so you pick up that word when God says in Isaiah 43, 26, I believe, He said to put Him in remembrance of His word Amen. so that He can plead your case with you. In other words, pick up that word and give it back to the Lord. Just pick it up and give it back to Him. <laughs> Dare to take God at His word and lay hold to the covenant promises of your health and your prosperity 
and boldly declare to the devil and hell that you'll not be held down by your present situation. You need to boldly declare to the devil and hell that you will not be held down by your present situation, but you will experience God's blessings on your life and in every area of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. More than conquerors. Saints, if you believe in the power of your words, they will come to pass. I'm telling you, if you believe in the power of your words, they will come to pass. If you do not believe in the power of your words, they will not come to pass. It sounds simple, doesn't it? And it really is. You have so much authority, so much power in your words, and all you have to do, you know, think of it this way. The Bible says that He has made us kings and priests, that we rule in this world as kings and priests. Kings decree and declare. And when they decree, things happen. They just sit there on their throne and they decree. And Jesus said in Ephesians that he, he raised you up with him and made you sit at his right hand in the heavenly places far above the principalities and the darkness of this world. So you are, been, you are seated in heaven at the right hand of Jesus. So you're sitting up there and he's given you the power and the authority and you can decree it and you can declare it and it will be. I do it all the time. I wouldn't be standing here tonight if it wasn't for decree, uh, decreeing and declaring. I started decreeing and declaring when I didn't have anything to decree and declare. <laughs> when I started decreeing and declaring the Word of God, I, have, I was in debt. Uh, a widow. I had a ministry. And I enjoyed my ministry. But God had a lot of good stuff for me. And he kept telling me that. So I just kept writing it down and I just kept decreeing it and declaring it. And here I am. I'm still decreeing and declaring because I don't think I got it all yet. <laughs> going to decree and I'm going to declare until the day Jesus comes. I decree that the Lord is good and is and his, all the time. Hallelujah. As I said before, the Holy Spirit is your pillar of light. If you want to be led by the Spirit, then you must follow God's Word. If you want to be led by the Holy Spirit, then you've got to know God's Word. If you want to hear from the Spirit of God, then you must listen to what God says in His Word. I'm going to say that again. If you want to hear from the Spirit of God, then you must listen to what God says in His Word. The Holy Spirit and the Word and Jesus, they're all one, according to John 1. In closing, let me say this. John 1, 1 says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and He is His Word. Brothers and sisters, choose to make the Word your beginning in every area of your life, okay? And let me say, when, when God says that in the beginning there was the Word, the Word was with God, and He is His Word. So I'm say, what I'm saying to you, no, let me explain this. In, choose to make His Word your beginning in every area of your life. In other words... When uh, whatever's going on, whether it's health, finances, or you're under attack, start with His Word. Let His Word be your beginning. Let that be where you start. You don't start by getting on the phone and calling your girlfriend or your neighbor. Let God's Word start. Start with His Word. Get in the bathroom like I do if you have to. But get wherever you need to be, in the garage or wherever. You know, in your car, wherever. I praise it. I... When I'm in my car, I'm listening to teaching CDs or music, gospel music. And you, 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 and in, when I'm taking a bath, I, I, I do the same thing. I take my iPad or my iPhone in there. you got YouTube. You've got all things, iPods. You can download all this stuff. And I just, you get feeding all the time. It's feeding all the time. And, I, and at night when I go to bed, I plug in. And somebody said, you listen all the time? I said, all the time. As a matter of fact, I woke up listening last night, and I was wondering who that was talking. <laughs> <laughs> glory to be the god i was listening lord <laughs> you know i heard once i don't know if there's any truth to it or not but that you could still hear when you were asleep i don't know but 
uh, not every night, but most of it. Before, I, before my husband and I were married, I did every night. I went, I, I did every night. I never missed a night, probably in 10 years, you know. That just, and if I'd wake up in the middle of the night, I'd plug back in because it, it would give me something else to think about so I wouldn't have to think about other stuff, you know. I just think about his word. And so it was last night I plugged in and I was downloading, I think, and I think I was listening to Andrew Womack, you know, because on his uh, podcast and on my iPad and I had it laying beside him and I fell asleep and the next thing I woke up and I heard somebody talking and all of a sudden I couldn't figure out where the, who was talking and I realized I was still plugged in, you know, and, <laughs> and he, was, he was still talking, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> But this is one of the decrees that I make almost every day, okay? This is one of my decrees that I decree mostly every day. I decree, I make declarations every day. There's not a day that goes by I don't make declarations. And sometimes, usually all during the day, but especially at least an hour or two in the morning. I decree and declare that God has a good plan for me, and it is unfolding before my eyes. I decree that the power and the presence of God goes before me, I decree that the winds of the Holy Spirit blow me to where I'm destined to be. I decree that my mouth may speak only good things and the goodness of God. I decree that my heart will reflect heaven in all I do and say today. This is my decree today. I declare that the life I am, I, I declare that the life I am now living in is the result of the words I spoke in the past. I declare that the words I'm speaking today is going to be where I'll be tomorrow. The words where I am today is a result of the words I spoke yesterday. And that is true for you too, brothers and sisters. Whatever is going on in your life is a result of what you spoke. You sowed some seeds, and, and but you can sow enough good seeds that they'll overcome, overtake the bad seed. Sometimes you, you've, made, you've sowed some seeds and maybe you can't dig them up. But you can sow enough, you can rebuke those words ask for forgiveness and, and rebuke those words and command them to hit the ground not bear any fruit any more fruit and then just begin to sow good seed and it'll overtake you'll have a good crop you might not get a good crop overnight but you will eventually you'll get a good crop are you hearing me so today i'm speaking good things because later in my life will become these later my later my life will become these good words which i'm speaking today hallelujah I'll not work in the negative, uh, I, will, I will not walk in the negative words that people have spoken over my life. I will not walk in the negative words that people have spoken over my life. I bind those negative words from my life, and I declare they shall not bear any fruit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Saints, whatever God has spoken into your life, don't let go of it. Whatever God has spoken into your life, don't let go of it, okay? You know, and I brought this. Uh, I have, some of you know, been over to my website, but this is a book that I got my hands on not too long ago. It's called Decree Your Today by Brant Luck. Uh, I was so uh, taken by it that I ordered a bunch, and I had uh, the person that runs my website and store to add this to my store on my website. And I don't make anything from it. I'm not, I don't even know the man. But I know an anointed book when I see one. And, and you're talking about decrees and declares. This is all this is. That's absolutely all it is, is declarations. It says, you know, these are uh, righteous decrees and victorious declarations. You know, it says, I decree the victorious declarations of praise even when I don't feel like declaring it. And I'm telling you, some days you don't feel like declaring. Some days I just soon drink my coffee and just forget about it. <laughs> but I know if I do, what the results will be. And I don't like the results. And you say, and you say I, I praise you for I'm wonderfully and powerfully made out of your image and likeness. I am called to speak and demonstrate your heart to the world. I, am, I declare that I'm a blood-bought, blood-washed child of the highest God, ready to do His bidding on the earth. I declare that you are the most awesome, incredible, loving, kind Father I know. God, help me to walk in all that you are. God, you are so awesome. You know, and it's, it just goes on and on, and it talks about uh, decrees on being an overcomer. I decree and declare to enter into your holy throne by the blood of Jesus that He has consecrated for me. 
I decree with a true heart and full assurance of faith to draw near to God and hunger for his heart. You know, it's, it's nothing but declarations uh, and the scriptures to back it up. And I know enough about scriptures to know that when I read that, and of course they'll give them the scriptures too, I know where the scripture came from. So you want to be careful what you, what you read and all, but it's called Decree Your Day by Brent Luck. And it's on my website uh, up there. But uh, give yourself, uh, treat yourself to a Christmas present. Because sometimes I've been decreeing and declaring the word for as long as I can remember. Almost, well, at least 20 years since I've been a Christian. Well, I've been longer than that. But since I've rec recognized that, the Lord impressed upon me the importance of decreeing and declaring his word. But, and so I've got tons of things written down that the Lord gives me and every time he gives me something you know I write it down and I start standing on it and decreeing it and declaring it until it comes to pass but you you have the ability to decree and declare your life and you can change it and and this book is written in such a way that you can just go through and yell at market the ones that you want to hit on today and the ones you hit on tomorrow and it's outlined for you and it makes it so easy it's so easy you know it, it it's really um if you really want to come up higher and you want these things to be a blessing in your life, I'm telling you that if you'll start making these declarations, decreeing and being the king that you are and the priest that you are and decree and declare these things, you will have those things. I'm telling you, I'm witness to that. And anybody that knows me knows this is true. And there's a lot of people, they are decreeing and declaring things, but they're but they're not the right decrees and they're not the right declarations and so they're getting those things too and when you can't when you get in the bind like i was the other day get in there you know and i've got it, my ipads loaded with things like this you know i'm seated in heaven in the heavenly places you know i'm the apple of your eye that you love me that you're pleased with me you know that you're happy with me god and you're not you'll never get angry with me the bible says you'll never get angry with me and that you love me. And you got to talk to yourself. you got to have some self-talk, children. you got to talk to yourself. And, and I'm telling you, whether it's this book or you just take the Bible and paraphrase it yourself because that's what he's done, which makes it easy. Or I go on the things that I've already written out and that's what I do every day. And it will happen in your health, your finances, your family, your marriage, your job. You don't get caught up in what somebody else is doing. Let them do what they want to do. But you just keep speaking the word. You just keep speaking the word. They won't if you don't ever put yourself on their level. You you are worth so much more and so much better. Just keep yourself elevated. Hallelujah. Just begin decreeing and declaring your life every day. If you only decree two things a day, do it. After a while, it will become a habit. And next thing you know, your whole life, your whole life will change regardless of what it is. And I'm going to close in prayer. Father, I thank you so much. You are so awesome, awesome God, Father. You are just, we just declare your goodness tonight. We declare your righteousness, Lord. We just declare that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are the host of the armies, Lord. And God, we just thank you that we don't have to be afraid. We thank you, God, that just as you led those Israelites, so will you do with us. We thank you, God, that you're the same yesterday for and yesterday today and forevermore we thank you god that you're never going to change and i thank you god that you love us we thank you lord that you are happy with us we thank you lord that you're keeping us as the, as the apple of your eye and father we just thank you that just as you love jesus you said so do you love us and father we just thank you for giving us power we thank you for giving us authority here on this earth we thank you lord for the privilege to reign in this life as kings and priests lord and lord i just pray that you'll give us the strength and the courage to keep the devil under our feet lord to put him down there stump his head off and just keep him there and father i just thank you for tonight i thank you for this awesome word lord and i just pray lord that it spoke to the hearts and fed the sheep as you instructed me to do and, Lord, I just pray for safe travels for everyone. 
And Lord, we just give you all the praise and all the glory. You are so worthy, Lord, so worthy, so worthy, Lord, to be praised. And we just honor you with everything in us. In Jesus' name, we give you all the praise and all the glory. Amen.